All I'm offering is the truth, nothing more. Now, let me give you four simple steps to success. In your personal development process, here are some good things to learn. If you wish to succeed, really you need four things. First, you need a good idea. Be the recognizer of a good idea. And there's all kinds of ideas, ideas of enterprise and products and services. If you want to do well, you got to pick up something that's good. Find a human need, find the answer. Take the answer in quality and quantity of service to as many people as you can reach in your lifetime. Success is a fairly simple formula, but you gotta have a good idea, something you believe in. And maybe you've already got one. Don't always be looking around somewhere else till you've explored where you are. A good book to read is called Acres of Diamonds. Acres of Diamonds. Unique little story about the man that went off seeking his fortune, sold his property. And on the property, they found the fortune in diamonds. So make sure you haven't walked off and left your fortune. Always looking, 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 never exploring what you already have. But be the student of a good idea. Here's the next step you need to succeed. You need a good plan, plan for procedure. And a plan here includes many things, the product plan and the implementation plan and the sales plan and your work plan. There's all kinds of plans to put together. Make sure it's a simple plan. If you've got other people working with you, make sure everybody can understand it. Uncomplicated, keep it simple. Mr. Shof had this unique approach to life, simplicity. He only went to the eighth grade in school so he approached everything very simply. Now he was really a reader and he was a well-educated man, but he was self-educated, but he always approached it. He said, go the simple approach. He said to me, there's about a half dozen things that'll make 80% of the difference in your life. Half dozen. Just find out what those half dozen things are. Proceed on those. Okay. Just boil it down to the simple parts. Good nutrition, about a half dozen adjustments in your nutritional program and you, and you, you solve about 80% of the problems, right? Now you may have a certain specialized problem that needs a specialized answer, but don't always go looking for the specialized answer until you've done all the basics, the fundamentals. Let the obvious be your best teacher, take care of those, and that might solve so much of your problem or give you such an edge on success that you do, don't need to go searching for some you know, weird stuff. Now, some people have specialized problems that need specialized help, I understand that. But uh, don't go off for that till you've done the seven things, the six things. Then if the six things that are basic doesn't get the job done, then go looking and searching for something that may be a little more specialized, okay? But uh, keep it simple, that was Shof's clue for me. Hey, go for the simple approach. And I know that you know, some human emotions and problems are a bit more complicated and need a bit more specialized help. But make sure when you go for specialized help, you get a specialist. But take the simple approach, make sure it's simple, make sure you can understand it, other people can understand it. We learn to do that in the sales process, right? Guys, well, I'm not doing too well. Maybe you can help me. I say, sure I can. How many people did you talk to yesterday? Guy says, well, yesterday I had these other things uh, going on and I really didn't get to it. I said, then we've identified the problem already, right? <laughs> and we've only been talking 10 seconds, all right? We got right to it. I mean, it's just fairly uncomplicated. Simple. Now, here's number three. The third step to success is the passing of time. Learning how to handle time is one of the big challenges in the road to success. Impatience, see, probably will ace you out of the future about as quick as anything else. Impatience. Not being able to last from spring till fall. And I know sometimes it's difficult, especially if you've borrowed the money. <laughs> and the creditors are on the line and the phone is ringing. Did you ever notice the difference in the ring of the phone when you're doing well and when you're not doing well? I mean, it just, it rings different, right? 
But how to handle that downtime, the struggling time, the summer time, when bugs you haven't even identified are working on your crop, and things you hadn't even been told of are eating away at your uh, garden. I mean, there's all kinds of things out there, and you've just got to learn to handle the passing of time and get your way through it. And don't be so impatient. You know, some people plant a little and a few days later they're digging around saying, where's my crop? Where's my crop? Hey, you got to hang in here. Hang in here. Learn to stay. Stay. A lot of things you got to give time to. Give your project time. It takes time to put together a corporate work of art. It takes time to paint a masterpiece. It takes time to put together a symphony. It takes time for the project. The national project has taken some time. We've been at the Republic for 200 years. Maybe we'll need another couple of hundred for it to have its unique influence on the world. It takes time. Next is give people time. It takes people time to change and grow and catch on and learn, and make the changes, develop the progress. Give your people time. And here's the major one. Give yourself time. Boy, it's easy to cut yourself off too soon. So I don't think I'll be able to learn it. I don't think I'll be able to do it. And you've only been at it for a day or two or three or a week or so. Give yourself time to change and grow and become a better person. Develop a unique understanding, awareness. Give yourself time to let things register. We all need a certain amount of mental time so things can soak. Figure it out and let it fall into place. Give yourself time to grow. No telling how unique you can become if you give yourself time. Now one of the greatest times to handle and to utilize is time alone. Someone asked me not long ago, I said, what are you seeking currently? And I said, two things, solitude and tranquility. You know, just get away where there's nothing but sky and trees, and breezes, and birds. Get out there and let tranquility just soak in your soul for a few hours or a couple of days or whatever time you've got to get away. And uh, take the time. You've also got to spend some alone time. There are some things you just have to decide all by yourself. You can get feedback, you can get awareness, you can get understanding, you can get a lot of things, even from family, close friends, close, close friends. I've got some very close friends, close family. My two daughters, I'm very close to them. We're close family, but there are some things you just got to solve by yourself. And you've got to learn to handle the time alone. I wrote a little thing one time, how to go from average to fortune. And I had five points. First was get serious. To do well, you got to be serious. You don't have to be grim, but you must be serious. Next, I said, get smart. You got to know more this year than you did last. You got to catch up. A guy said to me one time, he said, well, I know you're always talking about reading books, 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 library, read the books. But he said, I just can't get excited about reading. I said, sir, you do not read because you are excited. You read because you must. How far behind do you want to fall? You got to get smart. You got to keep up. Knowledge is flowing at an incredible rate these days, so you just got to know more about your business and about life and human behavior and what's going on. So get smart. Third is get excited about your ability to discipline yourself to do anything. Guess what you could do starting Monday to change your whole life? Anything, everything. It's not a question of what you can do. It's just a question of what you will do. Guy says, well, I got to get up and go to work on Monday morning. See, that's not true. That's probably what you will do, but that's not what you could do. You could write a whole new chapter starting Monday.
and tear up the old one, if you wish. It's choice time, right? Whatever you wish. But what's exciting is to know that on any given day, you can change your whole life on any given day. Whenever you wish. Now, see, that's exciting. Once you understand the awesome potential of that, it's hard to even sleep nights. You'll get excited. Shof got me excited back in those early days. I'm 25 years old. He got me excited about becoming wealthy, financially independent. He got me excited about the person I was going to become, learning to better handle the language, affect other people, develop my personality, all those unique things I was going to become. He got me excited. He said, all you got to do is practice, work on it. Unbelievable. Got me excited about my skills. He said, it doesn't take long to learn. He got me excited about borrowing my first money to go into business. He said, you have to get started in a little business. I said, well, I don't have any money. He said, well, that's not the problem. Now, see, up until then, I always thought it was, right? But sure enough, it wasn't the problem. He said, no, 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 you can get the money. He said, I'll coach you how to get the money. I said, wow. He coached me to go down and put the story on jingles. He said, it'll only take about 20, 30 minutes. And he said, you've got something, right? You think now is going to change your life? Make your fortune? Go for it? I said, no doubt about that. He said, you just, all you got to do is put that story on jingles. He'll go for it. I thought, wow. See, I didn't know that I was that good or that I could get that good. He said, no, just tell the story sincerely. Tell it like it is. Tell the total truth. And tell him what you're going to do with it. Tell him how you're going to make the changes and that he can help you get the money. And then wind up by saying this, Mr. Jingles, if you'll see to it that I get the money, not only will I do well, I will tell everybody I meet, you're the man that helped me. <laughs> now, see, I'd never done stuff like that before. So Shove coached me, coached me, coached me. I make it down to the bank and walk in. There's Mr. Jingles. I said, Mr. Jingles, how are you? He said, Mr. Owen, nice to see you. He said, come on in, let's chat a while. I said, yeah, I want to talk to you. So I walked in, we sat down. He said, how's it going? I said, pretty good. He said, I hope you haven't come to borrow any money. <laughs> now, Shof had left that one out and that one, uh, that one threw me right away. But I swallowed hard and said, Mr. Jingles, look, I've got a story to tell you you won't believe. He said, well, what is it? And I proceeded to unload on him in the next 20 minutes what Mr. Shof had coached me with all the sincerity. I told him I had something that I knew was going to make me wealthy and that I was changing my life quickly. I said, I've already started the process and all I need is a little money and I will soon be wealthy. And I wound up by saying, Mr. Jingles, not only will I do well, I will tell everybody you are the man that helped me get started. And I leaned back and let that grab him. <laughs> because Shof said to me, Mr. Jingles will be so impressed, Mr. Rome, Mr. Rome, with your presentation that if the bank won't loan you the money, he will personally. <laughs> now, see, that was a bit hard for me to understand. But guess what happened when I finished my story with Mr. Jingles and told him that my whole life was now changing? and I was going from average to rich. Mr. Jingles, when I finished, said, Mr. Owen, I'll tell you what. He said, I've heard a lot of stories, people sitting in this chair, but he said, you got me. He said, I'll tell you what. I'm not sure the bank will loan you the money, but if they won't, I will. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. So I got the money. But guess what after that? See, after that, I learned a very dear lesson there that with my skills, if I just practiced and got better with my skills, no telling what I could do, no telling what in the future I could borrow, no telling who'd buy my story. And I got so excited that if I wanted to, I could get good at anything and change my life, change my future. So get excited. That'll change your life. Fourth is get going. If you want your life to change, you want to be successful, you got to get going. Some people are always learning, but they don't get going. It's like the, like the guy that keeps bringing uh, materials to the building site and never builds anything. 
You just keep stacking up the bricks and the, and the plumbing supplies and the roofing supplies. Just stacks them all around. Somebody says, you must be really going to build something here. He says, wait till you see the rest of the stuff I got to bring. And he just goes back and he brings some more, brings some more, brings some more. See, pretty soon they'll come take you away. Okay, you got to do something with what you're gathering up, what you're gathering up, what you're learning. You probably already know enough now to become wealthy. You just got to use it. You got to get going. Now, the fifth one, and I went through all that to get to this one. Fifth key to success is get away. You've got to get away. You've got to take time to be alone, to reflect, to ponder, to weigh, to analyze, to think, to fill up. You've got to take the time, rejuvenate. That kind of time, it's important. Okay, that's the third step to the success life, is handling time. Fourth step to success, one of the most important, the solving of problems. And everybody's got a list of problems. Everybody. The rich merely ask for a longer list. But solving problems is a real challenge. And there's all kinds of problems, business problems, family problems, personal problems, financial problems, mental problems, emotional problems. We've all got these challenges. But that's the game of life, how to take it like it is and make it like you want it. How to turn resources into productivity. Human resources, physical resources, solving problems. That's the challenge of life and lifestyle. See, the challenge is how to be happy with what you got. You got something. The next key is how, how can you be happy with it? It's a challenge. It's a problem. It needs to be solved. I met Neil Armstrong one time. First man to step his foot on the moon. Neat guy. I met him in Chicago. Neil Armstrong said, going to the moon was simply a matter of solving problems. That's the way he described it. The trip to the moon was just solving problems. So no telling where you can go if you solve the problems. No telling what kind of a journey you can take. Just solve the problems. Now, let me give you some keys on problem solving that really help to alter my life. Problem solving. First, work out your problems on paper, not just conversation and thinking. Put the problem on paper. You'll find if you're around us quite a bit, the evening seminar, these two days, any other context you might have with us, we're always talking about paper, paper, journals, <laughs> projects, books, learning to think on paper, and problem solving is the same thing. To solve a problem, simple. First, divide a piece of paper in half. On this side of the paper, state the problem. Just write it out. Now, you don't have to live on it or live in it. You don't have to dwell on it. You don't have to stay on it. But you do have to state it. To make an intelligent decision, you need the accurate facts. You've got to know what the problem is. So that's the first step. Just write it out. In some very simple language, here is the problem. I've got this and this and this, okay? Just make a statement of the problem. Now on this side, work out the answers, okay? On paper, in your thinking process. Now to solve a problem, let me give you three questions to ask to solve any problem. Three questions to ask to solve any problem. Now, this is a process to go through, and you want to go through a process because here's what you want, not just the solution to a problem. You want to become a problem solver. If you solve a problem, that's temporary. If you become a problem solver, that's permanent. It's like the old line of what's better to have a fish or to learn how to fish. 
Right? It's much, much better to learn how to fish than it is to just be handed a fish. The same is true in sales. We teach in sales. Making a sale is temporary. Becoming a sales person is permanent. Right? People who are just going for the next sale, going for the next sale, live what's known as the temporary sales life. And they're always scrambling, 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 simply because they don't become a sales person, a persuader, by working hard on themselves, okay? So what you want to become is a problem solver. And you do that by going through this process. First question is, what could I do? The first question to solve the problem is, what could I do to solve the problem? Now, don't go beyond step one until you've thoroughly covered it. Then just make a list of some of the potential answers. Here's the first one. Here's the second one. Here's the third one. I could do this, or I could do this, or I could do this. Just start toying with some of the answers on the paper. Then once you've got these put together, which is the best one? You say, well, listen, would take too long. I need an answer a little quicker. I need to do it sooner. This one seems a little weak. This first one I thought of, that's probably the answer right there. Just work with it on paper, not in your mind. The best way to organize your thoughts is to write them down. It's a little difficult to just organize them in your mind. Organize answers in your mind. Come up with potential possibilities, options. You just got to write out your options on paper, my opinion. Now then, here's the second question to ask. Second question to solve a problem is, what could I read? There could very well be a book on the problem. Or if I went back through my journals, what could I read that might find an answer? Maybe you've got a problem that's got a section in the library. You just go to that section, start going through the books. Somebody else might have put a whole lifetime into trying to solve that particular problem, and they've written a whole book on it. Or well, there's several books on it, so that's a major question. What could I read? Okay, number two. Here's the third question to solve a problem. Who could I ask? Now, don't go to number three till you've passed number one and number two. And if you pass number one and number two to the best of your ability, and you've done your best to work it out, and you still don't have the answer, and time is critical, and you've got to get closer to the solution, then go to number three and ask. But let me tell you what knowledgeable people are always willing to do. Answer questions if they get the sense you've done your best to figure it out beforehand. You can't believe this sense you get from people. If you say, I've done this, I've done this, I've been through this, and I've read this, and I've done all this, and I still can't come up with the answer, could you help me? Almost anybody unique would say, of course, right? What is the question? Let me see if I can help you with it. If you've gone through this process, we all respond, first of all, to somebody else's effort. They just didn't come to us for some cheap, quick answer, okay? Now, see, we're all inclined to do that, right? When somebody says, I've done this, and I've done this, and I still need some help, and I think you can do it. We're ready to go for it. So ask, don't be afraid to ask, you know, go for the answers, but don't bypass this just for the quick answer because that won't give you the muscle. It won't give you the personal development. It won't give you the strength and the know-how to become a problem solver if you skip these two steps. So those are the three steps to solving problems. And once you become a problem solver, no telling what you can do with your business and your life and your social contact, no telling what you can do with uh, what you've got for the rest of your life's journey. Solving problems, handling time, developing a good plan, and coming up with a good idea, and your chances are excellent for becoming successful.